A lot of people ask me why I don't do more videos on my day job running a soft furnishings company. So here's one today that hopefully you'll find really useful. We had the longest day in the year last weekend and if like me you're struggling to get your children to sleep at night or to keep them in bed in the morning, this video is for you because today I'm going to show you a brilliant way to achieve complete bedroom blackout. At the start of March, I went down to my sister's house to install two bedroom blackout blinds. She has one son under two and would go on to have her second son during lockdown. The existing curtains and Roman blinds she had were pretty ineffective at keeping light out of the room in the mornings and evening. And you can see the problem they've got in here, even with a pair of curtains and a blind, neither of which I made or installed, I hasten to add. They've had to resort to this temporary it's a blackout on suckers solution for the window. But today's system changes all that. I've installed a lot of these in the day job and they are a fantastic system. Basically, we've got this cassette that fits up in the top of the recess that has the blind in it. Notice it's not only got brushes on the top, but also brushes on the bottom bar to prevent light getting in. But the real clever thing about this system is these side channels that the blind runs up and down that basically prevent any light coming in around the edge of the blind. We've also got a bottom tray that fits along the sill, along the window board, but I don't generally fit this because I think it looks a bit ugly and it's unnecessary. With the brushes that already come installed on the bottom weight bar. The other thing that comes in the box along with the instructions is some wall fixings for the side channels which are fissure fixings, nice touch quite often in these kits you just get the cheapest most rubbish fixings that are hopeless and a couple of top fix brackets for the head rail and this cord tidy and the all important child safety p-clip. Space is a little tight today on site so I've got my tools arranged on the floor just to give you a little insight into how we roll when we're doing jobs like this. I've got my fixings box here, screw box A which has a selection of some of these screws I use most often and my bag of power tools out of which I'll probably be using my little 12 volt drill driver this morning because it's so light. Combi drill for drilling into the wall. Shouldn't need my SDS but I've brought it just in case there's some concrete. I've got my hand vacuum but I've got Henry in the van should I need it. I also have my belt sander because you never know when you're going to be trimming little metal channels down to size, that sort of thing. Downstairs I've got this which I call the beast. Basically it's a bit of a mess because it got upended last night when I brought it into the house. But whatever you don't bring on jobs like this you always need. So I've brought the kitchen sink, literally all my tools. I've got my Dewalt tool roll which is my sort of basic portable tool roll which gets me out of trouble for most jobs. I've replaced some of the bits in it. And this larger Makita set for anything that it's missing. You'll find links to my entire tool collection in my Amazon store which you can access either from my YouTube homepage or from the description below this video. These are links rather than me physically selling this stuff but it doesn't cost you any extra and I get a small commission for any purchase that you make. Our first step is to mark out, drill and install the head rail brackets. Quick tap suggests that this could be plasterboard. Reasonably hollow, although it could be some sort of steel above. So I'm going to go in with a 5mm drill bit. This is a universal drill bit from Bosch. Great these because they can go into concrete, wood, metal. I'm going to drill an exploratory hole just to see what we've got up here. Yeah, it's gone straight through. So now that I know this is plasterboard with a void behind it, I'm going to use these Fisher UX6 fixings and these 50 by 4 millimeter wood screws. Even more effective would be the excellent Fisher Duo Power available in 6 and 8 millimeter diameter plugs. So I'm upgrading to a 6 millimeter drill bit. And I'm going to drill all three holes there. It's an assumption there's a similar void in each hole. It may not be, but we'll see. And as it was, I'm able to move on to the next step of hammering the UX6 fixings into the holes. 
The plugs just need a little final tap with a large diameter screw loosely inserted to gently hammer the plugs flush with the plastic board. It's important you leave a gap of a few millimetres between this bracket and the window frame so that there's a bit of play in the bracket itself when you clip the blind into position. The thing about these fixings is they knot up behind the plasterboard so you don't think it's going tight and you keep doing it. It's good to use a manual screwdriver after your electric because you have much more feel with it and suddenly that goes really tight and you know it's knotted up and that screw is secure. I'm just trimming the side channels down slightly as they were shipped just a little too long, which is obviously preferable to having them too short. Trimming through the brushes in the side channel initially with my junior hacksaw, then using my larger Irwin heavy duty hacksaw for the brunt of the work. Finally, tidying up the cut with my belt sander. So the side channel slots into the bottom bar like this and then itself slots into the head row. And then the side channel sits flush with the window frame. And what I love about this side channel is it's narrow enough not to intrude at all into the window. Step four, it's time to drill holes for the screws to pass through on the back of the side channels. And I'm doing this with an HSS drill bit, which is slightly wider than the diameter of the screw. And I use a longer screw to mark the position of the side channel fixing screws on the wall. Let me see that there. And then we're back to the six millimeter masonry or universal in this case, drill bit to drill the holes for the six millimeter diameter fissure fixings that came with the kit. I'm pleased with that, it's closed up the gap almost to nothing, which will mean minimum corking. And then there's just a bit of micro adjustments to make on this clip, which holds the bottom bar down securely against the sill to prevent any light getting in. And with the first blind install complete, except the corking, it was time to move on to the second window. A little bit of a tip I learned from Dave, who works with me. If you're drilling into a ceiling like this, like this it's a bit soft and you're wondering what you're drilling into and therefore what sort of plug to put in. Take the drill out, sniff it and if it smells of burning wood you know you're drilling into wood. Happy days you can just put a wood screw in rather than worrying about a wall plug. And with both blinds now installed all that remained was to cork in the gap between the side channels and the window recess. And finally, it's time to try out the blind to see just how effective it really is. Pretty good, huh? And it also comes with this breakaway device that simply disengages if a child was to get caught in the chain. This removes the need for me to install the P-clip you saw earlier, which under UK law has to be tethering the chain to the wall at least 150 centimeters off the floor if you don't have a chain breakaway device. However, you might like to use this chain tidy that comes with a pack to screw that to the wall and that way you can tidy the chains, stop them swaying around when they're not in use. For completeness, I should point out there are two systems you're most likely to be interested in. The contract system featured today that works for windows up to 1800 millimeters wide and high, and a maxi system that works for windows that are larger than this. The maxi system has a larger 70 millimeter head box and 70 millimeter side channels, but doesn't need the side channel clips or handle on the bottom bar. It is more expensive though. So that's it for today. Hopefully it's made you realize that this is definitely a system that us DIYers can install. If you wanna buy one of these systems, there are lots of places available online that sell it. You just need to Google contract blackout roller blind cassette system or worse to that effect. I would also be happy to supply you with one of our systems and I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can get in touch, where you'll also find in the description details of all the tools 
that I've referred to in today's video. These kits aren't cheap, but are good quality. In the window feature today, which was about 945 millimeters wide by just over a thousand millimeters in drop, you're looking at just under 300 pounds all in for this kit. Although you can keep the cost down by sticking with one of the standard colors, primarily white, and I'd be very happy to offer you a 20% discount if you ordered through watching this video. If you've liked today's video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up below. And if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here, but just make sure you click on the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my new uploads. See you soon.